Frank Close covers the Phillies. Uh, that's a dubious task right now. Uh, he joins us now for a look at the good. We don't want to talk about the bad. Just point out the good, Frank. I pointed out some good last night, I thought. I found a couple things. See if you concur. Maybe you picked up some ones that I didn't get, but uh, I got Bohm and Hoskins did not make an error. That's a rarity. I got Bohm stole the base. You don't see that too often. I got Nick Maton, one batter, one strikeout. <laughs> and he passed the test for uh, not having any substances on his fingers, right? That too. And I got Bailey Falter, six strikeouts in four innings. Did I miss anything? I think that sums it up pretty well. <laughs> I guess Neftali Feliz hit 98. <laughs> Neftali Feliz hit 98. Great. Um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, last night after that was over, it was like, oh, shoot, I got to talk about this on the radio tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, like, you go back to that, though. I, I don't think Hoskins can ever live those comments down, do you? I mean, do you, do you look at him and say, well, I get what he was saying, but, uh, I, I mean, I, I, don't under, I don't know how this franchise can go forward with him as – one of the leaders of the team after saying that. Yeah, that, that is not a good look. And and really, for the most part, that that interview went kind of well, I thought, with, with Hoskins other than that. But but I will say this. Jim Salisbury made a good point about it. He said that, you know, he was willing to face the reporters even after that error, whereas he could have just, especially now when everything's on Zoom, he could have just said, nah, not today. But I guess he kind of lived up to the music at, at the very least. I guess so, but um, I, I, I get it. He, he came out and he said it, um, that he came out to talk, but, he, you know, the preference is by saying, hey, look, I know you're going to write about the air, but we did a lot of good things too. I mean, that to me, I'm not knocking him so much as it just shows the mentality of him and the team, and, and that's just a mentality that if I'm the front office, I don't want. I'm not saying he's bad. I'm not saying that he was wrong. I'm just saying if that's your mentality, I think that's a mentality that shows where this organization – I think it's a microcosm of who this organization is. Yeah, I, I think you need to hear from him that we lost the game. There's no good, period, right? I, so, and, you know, I wrote about this yesterday. They I have no real winners on this team. One of the things you brought up in the article was great about Dombrowski bringing in Dalton and the fact that this team doesn't – like, what happened to McCutcheon being a, quite a, a leader? I mean, other than him, they don't really have a guy on this team. DD, I, I mean, nothing. Here's the thing. McCutcheon has never won a playoff series. So, so, yeah, he's got this pedigree. Yeah, he's got an MVP background, but he still is not a winner. Like, if you look at, if you look at wins and law, like whether or not someone's a winner based on whether or not they made, they made the World Series and won the World Series, he hasn't even won a playoff series. And if you go up and down the roster, very, very few playoff appearances among them, including the big names that they brought in, like JT Real Muto and Bryce Harper. So, you, you got to, you, and, and, and here's the thing I, I, this will come up in the mailbag too, but Dave Dombrowski a few years ago, went out and got Steve Pierce as sort of that difference maker on that Red Sox team. You got He's got to do something to kind of shake this up and, and bring somebody in with a new attitude because right now they're just trudging along. There's no question about it. And the first question that you got in the mailbag is, you're the GM, what would you do with this roster? I mean, I don't know where you even start. This is an unfixable, in my opinion, this roster is almost unfixable until some of these contracts expire. Right, and I, I think that is the reality, and I think that's the reality that Dave Dombrowski is operating in. You know, I, I think the best thing he could have done for this team is not gone crazy this past off season. He shouldn't trade any prospects, and he shouldn't sign anybody to deals that cost draft picks. And so then what do you do? Well, you sign Matt Moore, you sign Chase Anderson, you try to make a few pieces hoping that they work out, you know, the, the things that don't cost you a lot. And then you find a way to sort of navigate through this season and try to be relevant while you let the prospects rise through the system and you let Andrew McCutcheon become a free agent. You let Odubel Herrera become a free agent. And then you start to see that you have some flexibility on your roster to do some things. So, so I think right now Dave Dombrowski is doing what you might expect. And he has been spotted throughout the Phillies minor league system in recent weeks. He's been going around the, the, the local affiliates seeing what he has. And really, for somebody that got hired in December, now I think a lot of people don't realize this, but you know, you, you enter that offseason, you, you figure out your organizational approach for the offseason right afterwards. And the Phillies fired Matt Clintac, or he stepped down, or whatever you want to call it, and, they, and they, had a set, they had a set of path forward, and then he comes in like two-plus months later, right? So 
uh, he, in a way, he's got to he's got to sit around and evaluate what he has. And I know that that's just maddening for the fan base that you kind of have to kind of wade through whatever you have this season. You might add a couple pieces that do no harm. Like I just said, you're not trading any prospects. You don't even have room to take on anybody's money. But you might want to try to find something to mix this up just just a little bit. You know, uh, again, with with two thirds of your infield kind of graduating out into free agency, Alec Bohm moving somewhere else, probably like there's going to be a lot of moving pieces here. And so he's got to make sure that he is ready for this next co- upcoming offseason to, to really put his mark on this team. But but yeah, a lot of it is just muddling through a lot of this. It feels like this season is a wasted year, right? It's just get, you know, you got veterans holding on to spots. You don't really have guys that are ready. You know, you could you say, you know what? We're not a playoff team. I want to see Bryson Stott play. We're not a playoff team. I don't even know that they have anybody else that's ready. No, even... and in fact, that you look at AAA, their best hitting player is Ruben Tejada, who's like 100, and he's batting 244. So they have even nobody at AAA that's ready to sort of graduate up. And Adam Hastley injured. Uh, Cornelius Randolph, which opened some eyes for a little bit, injured. Mickey Moniak floundering. Scott Kingery floundering. So, <laughs> I, I think I, I think that the Phillies really just have no option but to to, to keep an eye on the waiver claims that, that they could possibly make. See if they could bring in a veteran from somewhere else from a team that's out of it. It's just willing to, you know, I, I see the type of trade that he could make this season is maybe to trade a Moniak or a Hastley for one of these veteran types, and you're just kind of giving up on Moniak and Hastley if you do that, but. He doesn't have much to trade right now, and, no. and so. Well, let me ask you this then. I mean, we know I'm not saying this is Dombrowski's fault. I think the previous general manager was in way over his head, and this mm-hmm. is a mess that he created. But Dombrowski, who has won World Series, he has been a successful guy. But is this the right type of build for him? I think so because he took over that Detroit Tigers team and he made them a winner, not immediately, but soon thereafter. So. You know, you got to trust in his pedigree to to do the right thing and kind of get this in shape. And and really, I, I just can't see him doing much because he has no room to move, right? So the payroll's maxed out, and and the prospects are all double A or lower. So there's nothing to trade. So what you have is what you have. You hope that the team, you know, that, uh, you know, this team is not going to fall be- below. 500 too much. Why? You saw it in the Mets series, right? One earned run out of your four starts against the Mets, 23 and a third innings. That makes you a 500 team by default. Even if you mess everything else up like the Phillies did, they still won two of four. So this team is not going to be a team that, that that's going to win a third of their games and get a high draft pick. That's just not going to happen. So so he's kind of in, an, in a tough situation here where there's there's really not, not much to move. There's not much to there's not much uh, in terms of prospects to, to, to improve. He's just kind of got to wait this out. And then, a lot, you know, most of the Phillies prospects and talent is a class A right now up in Jersey Shore, and they need to graduate up. Uh, all right, Frank, uh, some more questions. Lindsay wants to know, how do you feel about trading Hoskins and playing Alec Bohm at first base? Is that something this organization needs to consider? Everything is on the table, I think, this offseason. Uh, you know, the defense, you, you, can't, you can't live with his defense. You know, I think when Andrew, uh, you know, when Andrew McCutcheon, you realize he still had two years left when Alec Bohm was sort of graduating up to the major leagues. And I think the Phillies kind of figured, okay, well, you know, if you can get through a couple years at third base, then a left field might be open for Alec Bohm. I, you know, I, I think that's still a possibility that he ends up in the outfield, not just first base. So I think what will happen is they will – Look this off season at, at like you were saying yesterday. You know, the, you don't know if there's a DH or not next year, right? So I mean, you, you can't bank on it, right? So, you know, there, there's so much that that could happen this off season, and so many moves that you could possibly make. Among the possibilities is Bowman left. Maybe Bryson Stott comes up. You move one of Gregorius or Segura to third base. Maybe again, all these maybes. Maybe one of those uh, two players is is made available and, and is traded this off season you know, for the last year of their contracts. And, and, and maybe there's a DH. So, so maybe, maybe Hoskins p- gets plugged in at, at DH and maybe Bohm is in left field. And then you find a way to, to have a competent first baseman and third baseman. So there's, there are so many options, including a very strong shortstop free agent class. That's often talked about. I don't know if the Phillies are going to go, go, go to any of those 10 year deals that, 
uh, like the Lindor type contracts that the likes of Trevor Story will get, or or maybe Javi Baez gets too many years. But but you know there could be some good names left over after those really big big names kind of come off the board, and you could add somebody that could could factor into the, the whole equation. But I think defense has got to be a priority for this Phillies team. Everything should be on the table for them to make changes uh, this off season, and and I think that that Dombrowski, at least coming in from the outside, he's got he's got sort of this unbiased view. He's not attached to these players like anybody that might have developed them along the way. And I think anything is game this offseason. Um, Bailey Falter had a good outing. Someone asked you about him. Who is he? What's his long term? Th- what is he? A starter? A reliever? A journeyman? What what do you got on Falter? So I think for this year. He is going to remain in the bullpen, at least for now. Uh, I think he's on the short list to if they need somebody else. One thing that, that's kind of not really been made a lot of uh, so far is that Spencer Howard's already lost his spot in the rotation. Matt Moore is starting this weekend. So um, after Matt Moore had that great start as sort of the sixth starter in that doubleheader, Matt Moore is going to start again. So I don't think Spencer Howard takes his next turn because Matt Moore is. And, and beyond that, I, I think that... Do they move Howard help- to the bullpen? I don't know what they do. Do you send him to AAA? I think they, I don't think they know what to do. Uh, now, if they could if they could mold him into a good reliever, then you don't need to get um, Neftali Feliz into a game like that four years out of Major League Baseball. Uh, so so maybe maybe you know we keep hearing this a lot, right? He can come out and give you two good innings and then he falls apart, right? So does he profile as a reliever? Are they going to let him do that? Or are they going to commit to him as somebody that's going to be at the back end of the bullpen? Who knows? Uh, that all said, I, I think in terms of falter. Uh, they're going to kind of keep him around. He could be somebody to piggyback Velasquez or at least make, make the Velasquez starts a little bit longer. And, and you know, he's, he's, he's given them a lot. Uh, he was a starter at AAA. They, they moved him to the bullpen so that he could be, you know, be more prepared for that kind of role. I didn't think – now, here's the thing about yesterday. You know, a lot of people are saying, do you leave Falter in? I think that the Phillies intentionally made him not stretched out, as they say, to be a starter so that he could fulfill this bullpen role. And I think they might have thought it was he wasn't stretched out enough to go further. And of course, the, you know, if the game collapsed under Falter, you'd equip, everybody would be saying, "Why'd you leave Falter in?" But very, very nice piece. I see him now, sort of as the long man left in the bullpen. I mean, David Hill's gone. Matt Moore's in the rotation. Chase Anderson is still missing. So I think that role is his for right now. Uh, there you go. Uh, pull uh, Phillies questions. I know you got uh, bombarded with questions this I week. I sure did. Uh, the <laughs> Phillies. Uh, obviously, people are angry when things are bad. People yep. want answers. They go to Frank's <laughs> mailbag for those answers. You can read the full mailbag over at 973ESPN.com at Frank Close uh, if you want to get a question in for next week's Phillies mailbag. All right, Frank, take care, man. Talk to you soon, Mike.